Welcome back to the Not A Bloodthirster blog, everybody, and today we are going to be tackling the armor. My initial plan was to go both red for the armor and the skin, which is a difficult paint scheme to get to work, but I thought I can do it. The trick is to use different shades of red, so go more pink for the skin and then go more orange for the armor. Thought I could pull it off chickened out at the last minute, decided to go more for a blue-purple tone instead. This is going to be super easy because we are just going to employ a couple washes to paint our armor, and we're going to be painting right over our black primer. Since we are going to be using some thin transparent paints, we're going to be dry brushing on some white paint over our textured armor, and the reason for that is because the raised surface areas, the color of the paint is going to show through better as opposed to the black in the recesses. Beginning our washes with some Vallejo Model Color Dark Prussian Blue, and I'm using this color because I know that it's rather transparent, so I only have to thin it a little bit and you can see how bright the blue is on the white bits and how darker it is on a more recessed area where it's just going over the black primer. I did two overall coats with this blue and then a third in the recesses. Now because it's going over white primer, the more coats we put, the more intense the blue gets, but it also gets darker because it's covering up more and more of the white. So we don't want to put on so many coats that we end up with the black and white undercoated areas the same color. Our second wash is Game Color Hexed Lichen. This is going over more of the edge areas where the plate starts to meet the eventually brass trim. So we have this kind of light medium blue in the center, it gets more intense darker blue, and then it shifts to this violet purple color. After this step is complete, we are going to do a third wash of black or nearly pure black, but we're better off waiting until the trim is done before adding that. Also, you may notice we have a bit of a color theme happening, happening here. We have purple in the skin, and now we have purple in the armor. Hey, they actually go together. And there is our slightly washed out, thanks to the lighting armor, all done. It looks very purple now, but that's because we haven't done the trim yet. A lot of that purple is going to get covered up. And now on to the part of the model that makes every painter cry, painting the trim. There is a ton of armor trim to paint here and there's no secret shortcut way to do it. We just have to paint it all very carefully by hand. Starting off with a mix of heavy sienna, brassy brass, and black. The emphasis is on the heavy sienna, which is there to dull and darken our brass. Wasn't quite dark enough for my taste, so I decided to add just a little bit of black as well. Also added a touch of glaze medium, so the metallic paint flows a little bit better, and just did my best to carefully paint all the trim with this. It's kind of a shade layer, but it's more of an undercoat, just so we get a nice, smooth, semi-shiny surface to work from as we move into the other steps. Now our base coat is heavy sienna with brassy brass. Basically about a 50-50 mix I would say and that undercoat area again acting kind of as a shade but just so we can work have a good even surface to work from. Uh, you can see this armor is basically all serrated edges so all those spiky bits trying to highlight, trying to keep away from the rivets, any deep recesses, and just doing my best to carefully paint everything I can. 
Uh, once we get that first undercoat down, things get a lot easier. Uh, this step is still a little bit tedious, but uh, trust me, after this, smooth sailing. Rather than stick with the brassy brass for our highlights, I decided to switch to bright bronze. The reason being is normally I would add or just use straight gold. I didn't want to go gold with the trim here though. I didn't want it too bright and shiny. So decided to use the bright bronze instead, which is a, a little bit more dull and a little bit more in tone with a brass color. And as you can see, the paint is getting faster and faster and easier to do, starting to work more on uh, the top of all those edged areas. Still a lot of those edged areas. Also, don't forget to pick out all those rivets in the recesses. For our second and final highlight, mixing in some glorious gold and Vallejo Model Air Silver to our bright bronze. I'm using a mix here because straight silver would wash out the bronze too much, glorious gold would make it look a little bit too yellow and goldy, which I didn't want. So just a little bit of each color added to our bright bronze gets me the highlight that I want. Also remember that because we started off with a lot of heavy sienna in our paint that dulls the shadow areas and as we move into our highlights we get more of the natural light sheen and reflection of the straight metallic paint so even though we only have two highlights uh, we're actually getting a lot of contrast out of this paint job Now remember the first tri-color mix that we put down, that was basically an undercoat. It gave us a little bit of shadow, but uh, I still wanna add a little bit more shadow and also to clean up some areas. For that, using a mix of brown and black ink, uh, more emphasis on the brown here, so basically a dark brown color, and just going into the recesses uh, around the rivets any flat areas where I want a little bit more contrast, just layering this on, the paint is thin, and just making our brass a little bit more interesting. And then finally, basically the same mixture, but with more black mixed into it now. Uh, this is just going into the deepest recesses, mainly around the rivets. So we have, have a almost pure black, basically bronze, pure black, and then a spot of bronze. So we want those rivets to pop, so we need a nice dark edge around them. And now with the trim all done, we can finally return to our armor. Remember, I was gonna do a dark line on that. The reason why I waited until the trim was done because if I did the dark line first, painting the trim would have definitely messed up the dark line. So doing it now so we could clean up both the armor and the trim at the same time. And what I have here is a very dark mix, violet mixed with black. Wanted to emphasize the, uh, the violet purple color in the armor a little bit more. By the way, you may have noticed uh, in the spin around shot I gave you before painting the trim, looked like everything was gonna be purple. You can see how muted the purple is now because we do have the trim painted and all that sloppy paint is cleaned up. The final thing to paint on the armor is all the skulls. Now, logically, these are probably actually made of brass or something like that, some type of metal and not actual skulls. However, I decided to go for an actual bone color just because it adds more pizzazz to the armor. Just doing more brass would be rather boring. So let's paint it like a, an actual skull and just add a bit more variety to the piece. 
starting off with a secondary shade of camo black brown then we move up to our first shade flat earth mixed with camo black brown from here we move to a mix of flat earth and start mixing in some green ochre and then we'll move up to straight green ochre and then finish off with a little bit of buff added Two things when it comes to all the skull iconography. Uh, first of all, if you notice on the uh, shoulder pad, uh, that looks a little bit of a different color because I decided to vary the color of the skulls. Some are a little bit more white, some are a little bit more gray, some have a hint of green to them. So again, just for variety, so we didn't have the same off-white brownish color makes the armor more interesting and makes the skulls look more individual. Second thing is I have the paint a little bit on the thick side here. It's only thin about one to two. Uh, I do tend to like a little bit of texture to bone. Uh, I don't know why. Just bone can decay and it can take on different colors based on how it's treated, if it's buried or whatnot. So having a little bit of texture to it, I think just makes it look more, well, bony. And last thing to paint are the horns on the one shoulder pad skull. Started off with a base coat of Parasite Brown, now adding highlights with Parasite Brown mixed with beige. Decided to go with a kind of orange brown color because that would go very well with our red skin. Also, uh, it's not too far away from our brass color on the trim. so goes with a lot of the colors we've already used on the model. Then towards the tips, we are going to shade that first with a thin layer of game color charred brown and then a thin layer of black towards the tippy tips. I say shade, however, uh, this is more of a color uh, transition rather than actual shading. So. Uh, the terminology and the application is the same, though it's not giving us the effect of adding shadows to the model. In this case, it's just color transition to make our horns look a little bit more interesting. And that is where we're at so far on this model. I am far happier with how the armor came out as opposed to how the skin came out. And it's a good thing I just switched over to the armor because now that I don't have the red there, out of the way Loomis, now that I don't have the red there, uh, I can go back to the skin and I have a, a bit more wider variety of reds I can use to fix that area. Also going with the bone color for the skulls I think was the right option, really breaks up all that brass. So it just adds a little bit more variety and interest to the model. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time real soon. Watch out for snakes.